Shall I go through my defense once again? <laughs> I prepared uh, my talk between um, 6.55 and 7 this morning, so I, please be, uh, be I don't, know. don't judge me too hard. Oh, and there. But this is, um, I mean, earlier today you, I was just a PhD candidate, now you know this is a talk from a, from a doctor. So this, this is the real thing. Um, so I don't know, I try, I have um, three points I want to talk about. Um, okay, let's do two points, two points. By the way, now I'm a, I'm a teacher, at, uh, high school, a high school teacher, and it's Quite unusual for me to, uh, to talk to an audience of people who actually listen to what I say. <laughs> I start. No, I wanted to start. Uh, I've never done that before, so it's going to be uh, like uh, an experiment. I want you to think about three things that you enjoy the, mo the most in life. Okay, I'll give you 10 seconds. Skin. <laughs> okay, how many have uh, work among, among the, these uh, three things? Sorry. <laughs> I was not sure if I if it was okay to put that. Yeah. It's uh, in the start of the of the of the thesis, <laughs> and I wasn't sure how the com committee would react. Did they comment? No, they didn't. <laughs> <coughs> I will start with um, some tips about um, things I've learned and that could be helpful for PhD students and um, PhD candidates, sorry, and for uh, future or master students who consider doing a PhD. The first step is uh, you don't expect a Nobel Prize. <laughs> and uh, I said, uh, as a joke, but um, many of us probably know that it's not that much a joke. <laughs> Don't expect to finish in time. Don't even expect to finish in overtime. There are some tools that I've been using, software tools, that have been very um, useful. LaTeX and BibTeX, uh, when I started to write the thesis, You've probably all experienced when you write in Word the complex documents with references and all, suddenly everything disappears, all the references disappear, and you have no clue why. When you use good software like LaTeX and BibTeX, if something, if you get a problem, you know you can fix it. You can, you can find <coughs> where the error is. It's, it's, uh, it's hard to learn, but the resources on the internet now are getting really good and there are wiki books on LaTeX and, and don't take failure as a as a don't, don't do, take take failure positively you you will learn more by failure than if you don't fail and that is I, I call my talk here um, hard life of a PhD candidate part two because I had a lunch seminar uh, a couple of years ago something called uh, learning by mistake 
the hard the hard life of a PhD in ten day part or I didn't know it was part one. Uh, so learning by mistake, it's uh, a lot of the PhD is, is all about that. And then about organizing your time, you need to uh, to spare time for deep thinking. You cannot always be in French. Is there any English uh, English country native here? Because I have an expression in, in French. It says. If you're head in the handlebar, la tête dans le guidon, like a, <coughs> like this guy. Sorry. Um, la tête dans le guidon is, you know, at the end of a, at the end of the race, at the end of the stage, when you give everything you have. Well, you cannot be like that all the time. So you need you need to have. Uh, well, I would. I, I, there are many many. Parallels you can draw between training, training uh, sports, and uh, and uh, and work like a PhD. You need to alternate, and you, so you need to have time for deep thinking, and uh, cut off your emails, cut cut off, t uh, drag out the 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 net network cable for uh, for a whole day and work concentrated. Try try to do that. Cut cut off the telephone, and and also. Work on unrelated. Say, take time for unrelated stuff. You will, you will broaden your your uh, your viewpoint. And of course, the problem is that you are pushed all the way. So you have a tendency to be like the, the biker all the time. And so it's it's extremely difficult to manage to to take a step back and actually relax in some way. But it's something you need to train on, I think. And get a life. Uh, don't uh, don't put all your don't put all your life in the work because uh, if you fail in the work, then you don't have anything left. So so you, you don't make yourself dependent on the work. Um, and if you when you uh, work overtime. Well, this is uh, about uh, how do you call it? it yeah, when you, when you work in an office, take uh, breaks. Be careful with your back. Be careful with your body. If if you do, if you take it too far, you you destroy yourself. You need to you need to take breaks every half hour, every hour. You need to find a good position with your back and. Uh, uh, yeah, I can tell you by experience or from experience, and uh, try to uh, keep time for some fun, like uh, like that. <laughs> Choose, choose carefully who you work with. Try to find people you like, work you like that uh, that inspire you. And um, well, not everyone out there does so. So, so make good choices on that. And that, uh, in particular, uh, counts or uh, is uh, is uh, important when it comes to your supervisor. And I've been reflecting a little bit on uh, how, uh, what is important, uh, what qualities are important from the, for the supervisor. And what I've come, um, come down to is that um, for me, of course it's different from, for everyone, but uh, for me the, the most important is that he, he or she steps up when you need, to, when you need him or her. That, uh, when you need to talk with your supervisor, that you know that he or she is there. The second and most important is that uh, this, that he or she inspires you. And I would only point, put in the third place that that he or she is a good scientist. 
make also sure that, uh, or I, I think it's important that that you keep ownership of your data, and that is not a given uh, nowadays. When you when you publish in a in a journal, you often you lose complete ownership over the work. It's uh, actually the the journal you you actually have to pay to make a copy of your own article. That is completely insane. So, and there are alternatives to, to such journals. So, so think about think about that. Think about what is right here, what is wrong. And uh, and it would be wrong to think that the purpose of the PhD is the um, is only the scientific work. From from my point of view, the, the most the, the biggest purpose is your your own uh, development. Uh, you learn methods of working. That is, that is, uh, to my point of view, more important that, than um, than uh, the scientific uh, <coughs> work. I also have in my uh, in the thesis. I have as. Uh, Phrase or how do you say? Well, anyway, small phrase before this, the start of the. Hmm? Preface. No, not the preface. Uh, quote. Quote. Yeah, it's not a quote, but I say, I, de I dedicate it. I dedicate it to those who swim against the tide. Mm -hmm. And um, that is because um, uh, I feel that it's important to have uh, principles and to fight for them and uh, and I found that during my PhD that uh, that it uh, required quite some fighting actually and uh, and, it, and that it's it can be pretty hard and um, and few few people around me I feel uh, do that and I, it's, I, I regret it. I, I think uh, the, many of the problems that you might encounter uh, would be due to, to that, the, the fact that people don't stand, don't take a stand. They just let, let things float, and uh, it's the easy way to just let, to just uh, let things be and, and and don't take a stand and, and to not take a stand. And it, it's not only about the PhD, it's about uh, life in general. And, yeah. So I, it's, uh, there are some examples like what I said about open science uh, or this publishing business. Uh, the, the big uh, publishing companies, they, they are some of the most, uh, most uh, profitable um, enterprises in the world. And, and, um, and, you, and uh, they're actually making those profits on, on your work. And so you, you need to, to think about is that is that is that what you you want it to be? Uh, from my point of view, I, I want to keep the ownership of my data. And and, and there and I see now when I did uh, the literature review for the tri the, le the tri lecture, I, I see there is a, there has been quite some change in the past few years and. More and more is getting open. All the IPCC work is, or all the IPCC reports, not not necessarily the literature that is that it links to, but is is uh, freely available. And, and um, I think it's important to reflect on that to to, uh, to see that uh, it's what we do that it has an effect on uh, on the whole. And uh, in projects that involve private companies, you have the same uh, you have the same issue that the private company would not necessarily want you to release data. So uh, you need to think if that is how you want to work. Do you want if you want to, to, to do science, you need to talk with people. You need to be able to to talk about what you're doing. And if you can't, is that the way you want to work? I don't think so. And there is the issue of um, bad management, bad 
boards, uh, bad dealership. Uh, it, uh, we, we had an issue last year at the end of my of the PhD and, and uh, I got quite uh, involved in that and, and it took probably a while. I, 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 was, I, would have, I was supposed to, to work only on my PhD and probably half of my time I went around talking with people about the problems in a, in a workplace that I would leave two months later. Uh, but it's the point that it's important to stand up and if you feel that uh, there is problem in an organization, you need to, 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 to try and do something about it. And to continue that direction, uh, now in my new workplace, we had a, an issue with the management there. And, uh, and the guy at the top left, was became too much pressure, and uh, and then uh, but then you realize it, that doesn't solve the problem. You need you need to find why it's not it's not a person it's not a person that is that is necessarily the problem. You need to, to find what was it with this person with his her way of managing that wasn't working. And just uh, just changing a, just changing a manager manager. You could the next person, the next manager could be as bad. So if you don't find the root of of the of the problems, you haven't solved anything. And it's very it's very easy to put all the blame on one on one person. And uh, yeah, it is it is much easier than to try and analyze what is what is actually going wrong, and maybe what is my my role in that. What is what is that I can do better. I will take a last point about uh, the mental health of the um, of, uh, PhD candidates. There was uh, one point during my PhD I was looking around and uh, knowing people uh, up here, knowing in Tromsø, in Trondheim, and I made a list and everyone had, I'm not, I'm not saying that they were like unhappy, they were, they were, they had deep, deep psychological troubles and and I think I take uh, responsibility for for not being good enough about, uh, in talking with each other when, we, when I was a PhD candidate we, we are probably uh, well, may, or maybe because we have so much work we just we just don't take the time and we work in our office alone or but we need to talk about those problems, those issues because I think most of us have them and if, if we don't talk about them we're not going to solve anything. We, we, we can actually help, help each other in these issues I think. Yeah, so I have five minutes left but uh, as I said that I, I've uh, turned the page actually now I, um, I stopped being a researcher and I started uh, working as a high school uh, teacher and for the moment I, I enjoy it uh, more than I, than I did being a researcher. I like the contact with my pupils and, and it's a very stimulating environment. So I moved to Amherst and I work there now uh, for the moment 50% as a high school teacher. And um, and I actually encourage you to to try it. You, I'm sure if you can contact the school here, they will let you come and talk with uh, the kids. And I think if both the kids and you, you you will uh, learn a lot from that. So it's a uh, it's very interesting. If you have questions, we we have uh, five five minutes left. Yeah, Margaret. I think your point about talking to other people about uh, the problems is a good point and that's why I like you, I don't know you so well, but I remember very well because you were one of the few that sort of ad admitted that oh shit I don't really know if I think my work is so important and sometimes I don't do anything in one day, so it was really good to, okay I'm not the only one. <laughs> So I think you should know that 
You have already. You did that. You didn't just sit in your office. And yeah, and yeah, thanks. Uh, I, it was. Was where the, the last I think I remember we, we had the discussion after my this presentation I had this uh, lunch seminar and um, but and there I, uh, I opened it a little bit about problems and that things were not going very smoothly actually yeah. but uh, but in in the in the everyday uh, everyday life I I was pretty much alone in my office and not yeah. communicating very much but it's I'm not saying I mean. It is difficult. It's difficult to balance as a PhD candidate to balance uh, your personal life and to. Uh, it's it's ex extremely difficult. And I've been wondering if it if it's been like that all the time. If if our supervisor, if they had, supervisors, if they had, if it was as difficult, I've actually never asked them. But uh, it's something we should do because I, I I hope they I hope they didn't. I don't know. When you list, uh, how do the psychological traumas of PhD students relate to location? Once it's found out more affected, less? Yeah, but exactly. That was one thing I was thinking that because up here we are um, in, uh, we don't have um, these um, environments of our group of people working. It's it's very in many fields you work alone. So I was thinking that probably it's, it's more difficult up here, and you have the fieldwork in addition. The fieldwork is extremely demanding, and and not not many people, or in in when you write articles, it doesn't. It's it's more difficult to write an article about fieldwork than to write about normal data. Or any, I mean, um, if you make numerical modeling or stuff. So so I so I've been thinking that. Possibly that it's harder to do PhD up here, but then again, I knew people in Tromsø in uh, Trondheim, and they were uh, on sick leave for several months, and uh, you know, so so I don't know, I, I really don't know. I, I but but I but I think uh, these issues they they happen everywhere, and and um, and it's uh, something uh, I have this theory of I I don't know if it's called. Um, the good girl uh, theory. Uh, it's um, uh, I don't know if it's because it happens more to to girls, but that they should be perfect in a way. That so everything they should be perfect. And, and we as PhD students have been like, like good good students at everything. So we we were used to to always getting things done or to to, to be good. And when you start a PhD, that's what you learn that you are not good. You 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 make mistakes and. And and because we've gone through the whole uh, our whole educate the whole education, never learning that actually, we've always learned. Or I don't know about you, but always learned that we were the best or whatever. And and then you come there and and you suddenly now you're you're an adult and now you learn it. And it's too late, or it's not too late, but it's much harder. So so um, I lost a little bit. Uh, Right now, but um, that may be one one uh, root cause also to. Uh, you know, I was going to say so. So so you also, uh, it's much more difficult to admit it, admit that you have problems, and and then of course to talk about it. You need to you need to admit it. You need and you need to not be ashamed of it, and just I mean because uh, yeah, ninety percent of the oh no, I don't know, I don't remember. The, the statistics, but it's well over 50% of the population they go through a depression once in their life. So I mean, it's something that happens to everyone, almost. Yeah. Would you do it again? Huh? Would you do it again? <laughs> <laughs> and you no, but that, that is a different question than saying, do you regret it? Because what is there to regret? You've done it, and I mean, you don't know what would have happened if you if you hadn't done it, right? So, so in a way, you cannot really regret. And then there is a question: of Would you would you encourage people to do it? And honestly, I don't know because it depends what kind of person you are. Some some people would would find it good and 
but um, there, there is always there are there always comes good things out of it, and maybe some of the things it takes you ten years or twenty years to to figure to figure. So it's very difficult to say, but I will not do it again now. <laughs> and the irony is that uh, it's first when you've done it once that that you know how to do it. <laughs> Then maybe it becomes uh, boring if you know what is not boring is doing new stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I could just add something quite shortly because you said that you had never asked your supervisors whether they had experienced the mm. same thing. And I think you had a really good uh, speech here today and important, but I'm also thinking about the development of a PhD because to me it appears that previously it was kind of that you summarized your work. Why today you do it maybe immediately after a master, and I think it would be quite important if people had some normal work maybe between the master and the PhD, yeah. and that could maybe solve some of those things you yeah. raised. But I've had a normal, and I, I've had a normal work, and and uh, and I'm glad I had I had it. I, I would def that is actually something I would recommend. I, I agree to have a to have a normal work before you start the PhD. I don't I don't think that you are. I don't say you're not going to do a good PhD, but I, I think you will uh, <coughs> you will uh, gain a lot from the maturity. But it depends a bit on how the system has developed as well, because the system wants people to kind of continue immediately. Yep. So mm. it has kind of going back to how things are now. Mm. Um. Okay, but I hope you uh, enjoyed. I enjoyed talking to you. So um, th and thanks a lot for. Um, for um, listening to my talks. And Thank you for the courage. Thanks. Mm -hmm. <laughs>